G'day guys, uh, Hexter back again. Uh, this video is just a quick one to uh, show you guys what I've been up to over the last uh, week or two. So, uh, I've been away from the coding and the software side of things and um, having a go at a few different little bits and pieces. I've uh, got the 450 helicopter there, T Rex clone, it's mostly aligned parts now. And I'm planning on making it an Ardu helicopter. Now, what does that mean? Basically, it's an Arduino board that controls helicopters' flight, stability, uh, you can do GPS waypoints, all sorts of really cool stuff that um, I, I need to have. I, I have to have it. I really need it. <laughs> I want it. So I'm going to build it myself though. Um, that's probably the, the biggest difference here to any other one that you'll see is other people are buying off the shelf boards and whatnot. I'm not. Um, start off with, I've got my little pressure sensor module that I etched this board myself. Uh, the module is a HMP03 I think. It, um, it comes off weather stations um, like this one it's a J-Car product I, I work at J-Car so I grabbed this and I noticed that they have the pressure sensor module the temperature sensor module humidity and a few other bits and pieces so yeah, I grabbed that and got the code up and working and that works very well um, what else uh, here's a little real time clock module a little board I etched up uh, two days ago. Uh, it's a little watch battery, coupling cap, a couple of pull-up resistors for the uh, ITC line. Yeah, that works great. That was a free chip. Uh, that was a free sample from Texas Instruments. Uh, I just ordered that in the temperature sensor module and whatnot, and uh, that come and soldered up nice and easy. And the, the DS. 2300 code for Arduino is compatible. Of course, it doesn't have any any EEPROM space or, or anything there. It's just, it's just registers for reading your time off and setting the time. Uh, but yep, that works great. Oh, what else? Uh, my auto stabilization for a camera. Now this was actually made. Mm, a month or two ago actually now uh, I made it in maybe half an hour that's the alcohol breath tester from uh, from J-Car that I turned into a mini Arduino and the accelerometer, 3 axis accelerometer, analog accelerometer from J-Car, it's a Freetronics uh, accelerometer I can't remember what chip it's based off but um, yeah I just I did this really quickly just as a proof of concept I've seen a, a, one of my customers who flies helis, I've seen he, he had a, a gimbal set up and I was really impressed with it and so here's my little quick version of it. Of course I'll have a few more axes like the XYZ axis and um, so it'll keep the, the, stare at the uh, camera steady whilst I'm upside down and any orientation. At the moment that's, uh, that's averaging a readout from the accelerometer 50 times before it's mapping it back to the servo so it's a little bit of a delay or in a 40 second delay between writes as well so you can see that there but it works quite well I was happy I didn't spend long like I said it was 15 maybe 20 minutes work on the breadboard literally maybe two minutes on the code for Arduino to talk to that and map it out to the servo I did not spend long I just wanted to see and that works great yeah. Um, what else? Ah, the base station. Here I have. Well, let's pull it all the way apart. It's just a basic Arduino board, uh, 328. Uh, this is just a couple of 2IC EEPROMs. I think they're a 24 LC256s. Um, I've also got a whole bunch of Atmel EEPROM chips here that I've just stolen off plasma TV boards and whatnot, and I've written to all of them, they all work great. Um, 
so the idea is that's going to obviously store all my variables and data and times and, and whatnot. Um, and pictures and stuff because like, I'll, I'll have a graphics display set up on this unit as well um, as a proof of concept once again always proof of concept with me <laughs> I'm just using a Nokia 3310 LCD that I ripped out off a, an old Nokia Need a beer. Beauty. Yeah, so I've got five volts of power now. And I've got me little screen plugged in, so let's have a go. I don't know if you'll be able to see this too well. Let's try and show it. Basically I've got basically some images that are being read from the EPROMs underneath in the stack there. Um, I'll reset that so you can just see that it's reading the pictures via EPROM. So that's coming from EPROM, picture of me, J car logo, getting read from EPROM. And then just going into a basic hello world and a console and a little scrolling thing, but yeah, no. Um, I mean, <laughs> when I do this, I'm gonna have, like I'm gonna have FPV goggles and uh, body on-screen displays. I mean, this was just really just so I can have some data show on the units. Um, so yeah, I mean, that worked well. We're just playing around. Um, what else is there? So pressure sensor, real time clock, screen. Ah, now communication. Uh, a lot of guys. Just uh, they use the XB modules for uh, talking to the to, a, to their Arduinos and you know setting GPS waypoints or you know making alterations and whatnot. Uh, once it, it's not really because I don't like the XB mo uh, modules. I do. They they're great, but the, the whole idea of this project was to do it all myself. I want to etch my own boards. I want to find components. I want to put it together. I don't really want to go buy too much stuff. Um, once again, it's not because I'm cheapskate, I just, I, I like learning and I like doing it this way. Um, more power to me, I think. Uh, so, communication. I've chosen, well, I think I'm going to choose, I haven't quite 100% picked this yet, but the NRF24 LO1 module, which is just a little 2.4 gigahertz radio module. Uh, these particular ones, They've got like a nice little pigtail SMA connection, um, your 8-pin SPI interface. Um, I've, I've got quite a few of these little modules. They're found in cheap 4-channel uh, helicopter uh, transmitters. Uh, these ones in particular come from the GT3340 4-channel helicopter that's no longer uh, supplied by JCAR, but it's an older model of the JCAR helicopter. Um, and also, uh, that's, that's the sense, this is going to be transmission side, so back at base where I am. Uh, for the receiving side, I'm thinking maybe use another one of these, or maybe this is a heli control board off the 4 channel, the, the GT3340. Um, that's a 3340, it's been modded up a bit. I sort of don't use this one anymore, but no, I'm, I'm redoing it for the kids. But uh, so this is one of the control boards out of it. Uh, it's just an Atmel Mega 8, a couple of sets for your two main motors and your two-channel servos. But why I like it is, well, I mean, I can access a lot of these general pins for for use. I can use a, a the, the, um, the soft serial library and pick any pins I like to, to input and output serial data and it has the NRF24LO1 little module on board I mean, it might be a little bit hard to see that chip there but uh, that's the 2.4 gigahertz chip with a little bit of amplification circuitry going off to the antennas here 
Uh, so it's all in one. There's my Atmel chip and the NRF24 chip. It's all there ready to go. I don't really know whether I'm going to use it or not, but I've programmed it, I can talk to it. I you know, ran a ping test between this and, and this throughout my house and throughout my uh, neighbourhood, and it worked quite well. So, yeah, I think that's getting getting pretty close to it. I can't really think of anything else I wanted to show you guys yet. Um, ah, maybe my little... And if I can zoom in here. No, I can't, but... My little charging station is just the generic four-button charger. Ran off an ATX power supply. Um, I know a lot of you guys do this. I, I, I've been using ATX power supplies for like eight years to do whatever I want with. Uh, on the 20 pin Molex, uh, it's really hard. This is, you look up an ATX power supply mod tutorial if you really want to know, but just a quick one for you guys. You, on a 20 pin Molex, there'll be one green wire, unless it's a proprietary Dell power supply or something like that, then they won't. But most power supplies will have one green wire, cut that, join it to any black wire, and your power supply is up and running. Um, that's a nice. Nice and easy power supply for chargers and for 5 volts from my Arduino. Um, I've got a few of these running on old LCD monitors that the power supplies have just given up on, so I'll just strap one of them onto the back of it and away it goes. Yeah. Okay, um, yep, I think that's about it. Um, if you're interested in how I'm doing my boards, I'm just using some single sided copper clad, I'm printing it off in mirror and iron it on, I print on photo paper, iron on, I don't, I've gotten that down pretty well. I only have to iron on once, let it soak and peel it off and I etch. Uh, if there's any touch ups to be made I get just a standard sharpie, 